I really love uh, strong female characters. For me, at least for me, and people can agree or disagree with it, I try to create a very strong, beautiful character on, on uh, Mako on Pacific Rim, but I wanted very much to um, have a good, solid gothic romance thriller with uh, two great parts for, for actresses. And, uh, you know, we've done it in, in Spain with uh, The Orphanage or uh, Julia's Eyes or stuff like that, but uh, I was very, very tempted to try it in English with a movie that looked classy and big and had scope and beauty, but that nevertheless was scary and brutal at the same time. So that was a great return. Now, to do it, I needed to anchor it on great actors. And uh, Jessica, whom I work with on Mama, and who is one of the best actresses right now, she comes in, I send her the script, and I say, uh, read this. You know, I, I was not offering her any part. And she chose the part of Lucille, which is the antagonist. And she does, and she's so scary. She's so, oh my God, she's fantastic. <laughs> what happened is I had Crimson Peak written eight years ago. Universal Studios, Donna Langley bought it because she believed in me and loved Pan's Labyrinth. But then we got stalled because the budget kept coming back a little higher than anyone wanted. And uh, it was only after Pacific Rim that Legendary came in and said, we love the script too. Let's co-finance that was able to do it. And then I talked to them and I said, uh, it's R rated and it's really, really beautiful, blah, 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 delicate and violent. And they said, it's okay, but just you have to hit a budget. And they gave me the number and I said, okay, I can hit the budget. And I went from Pacific Rim to The Strain, which was a super tight budget, and then uh, Crimson, so I was able to keep it. Well, it, it, to me, uh, what happens at Legendary is that Thomas Stoll and John Jashney are both A, storytellers, meaning people that are into it to tell stories, to finance visions, and second of all, they're super fans. You know, Thomas and, and John are very different between them, but each of them have their own stake in what type of stories they like to, to see. And the reality is that we all have fears. Uh, you can get scared by me or a newscast, but you get scared. Or you can be scared by your boyfriend or a bad email. I mean, but the fact is part of our impulse as mammals is fear. So the, the key is to translate something that has the tropes, for example, on the strain of a vampiric lore. The coffin, the vampire hunter, the daylight. Things that are really, really classic, either or tired. And then you grab them and you use something that millennially brings it to uh, an area that people are susceptible to, like a pandemic. People are afraid in the same way that they were afraid of the Black Plague in the Middle Ages, they're afraid of a virus right now. So you use that as a door to get into their fear. Now, fear or humor are incredibly personal. What is funny to you is not funny to me. What is funny to him or her or scary is not scary to me. So same thing, you cannot, you can tell the same joke and, and to 10 people and five will go, that's super offensive. Three will go, that's the best joke ever. And two will go, I don't get it. <laughs> so, you know, it's the same with horror. You, you can only satisfy yourself. So as a storyteller, you, you go, did I find it creepy? Yes, I'll go with it. <laughs>